welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the tea and uh, I should say the orange juice is very good. Thank you for that. And thank you for being back. Now, um, after the keynote presentation, maybe let's start with the basics here. What you want to do is uh, to become a GCPC center, a data collection and or production center in the WIS, so the WMO information system. I think um, what is in front of you here, and uh, now I speak to those implementing this center, are uh, maybe two broad lines. One is uh, how to implement a GCPC, so uh, the WIS functionality. As you will see, this is a rather generic thing. So I could say maybe an ag agriculture forecast center can be a GCPC, a marine center can be a GCPC, and maybe also um, a normal regional uh, forecast, three-day forecast center can also be a GCPC. So in a sense, they produce very different things, yet they are all GCPCs. So um, what uh, makes them common or what they have common is uh, some technical specifications. Uh, so these technical specifications are defined by the WIS. Uh, this means that the first uh, big thing in front of you is the implementation of the WIS. And on the other hand, the second thing that uh, you face is how can you implement those services that are needed to become uh, the uh, regional marine center. I think here Ivan's presentation gave a very good outline already uh, what, what is involved with doing this. Now, um, I will talk about the technical specifications of the WIS. And I will start um, with the GPS uh, that you all know. So I think, uh, as I said earlier, the WWW is what glues together the WMO community. Uh, experts from different countries, when they first meet, uh, I have observed often talk about GPS connections and um, th that is sort of how we often get to know each other. So um, there's the GPS and uh, you know that um, in the GPS there is regional telecommunic telecommunication hubs, RTHs, uh, NMCs, uh, national meteorological centers, and the DC data centers. Um, I should maybe say uh, that the GPS is not uh, disappearing with the WIS. That is something uh, I often hear. People are concerned uh, about what happens to the GPS. Will it somehow be affected by the WIS? And uh, I should say this is not the case. The WIS uh, contains the GPS as one part, but what the WIS does is it adds some new services to the WIS to address uh, to the GPS in the course of WIS uh, to address some of the shortcomings with the GPS. So, for example, um, you as forecasters, for example, uh, might sometimes wonder, uh, I need a certain data for my forecast, or I would like uh, to know if a certain product exists already somewhere in the world. Or maybe uh, you're working in a university project, so you would like to do some data analysis, but where can you find data? 
uh, right now, these are rather difficult questions. You would maybe have to reach to the phone and ask somebody, or you would use Google or, or another search engine, and maybe you would find. But there is no big catalog of uh, all information in WMO. So um, this is what the WISH does. Uh, it, it adds a catalog of information to the GPS of products available in uh, the WMO community and beyond. Uh, then, um, there is also um, another issue in the GPS. For example, um, if you uh, are disconnected for a while, for some reason, then um, it is not very straightforward to recover those messages that you haven't received in, say, those hours where you were offline. So um, also this is a service that is added um, to the GPS. Uh, there is more, and uh, I will talk about them later, but that is just to introduce that the WISH builds on the GPS uh, in its uh, current form. So uh, in the WISH, there are four big components to speak about. Three of them are centers, WISH centers, and uh, then there's the data communication network. We have seen that in the GPS world, uh, we know the RTHs and um, the NHSs and data centers. Uh, now in the WISH world, there's uh, three new types of centers. And those centers we know already can sort of be mapped into uh, the new categories of centers. Um, even though there might also be new centers, like uh, for example, uh, here the Marine Center, which is an entity that hasn't existed yet, but that maps here um, into the GCPC type of center. So um, what is there is um, national centers and uh, data collection or production centers, GCPCs, and global information system centers, SIS. So um, what are these three types of centers? Uh, first, uh, the national centers. They uh, usually correspond to uh, NMHSs, so they nationally collect and or produce uh, information and products, such as, for example, making city forecasts or making uh, uh, um, wave height forecasts for the territory of the country, um, as well as operating automatic weather stations or the like. Then um, there's data collection or production centers. Um, they are very similar to a national center in that also they might collect some information uh, or make some forecasts and then distribute it. However, the difference is that the scope is regional rather than national. Uh, I can give you an example uh, of a GCPC. Maybe some of you know the ECMWF in Europe, the uh, uh, center where Europe's NMHSs have bundled some resources um, to make uh, um, uh, models so that not everybody has to buy their own supercomputer. Um, the models that are made there are regional, so thus uh, the scope of the center is regional. Mm, I could give also a, a different example. Uh, in uh, Africa, there is ACMAD, where um, the participating countries have delegated the authority for certain types of services, I think um, 
for agriculture forecast, for example, to this center, it then um, distributes this in the region. So uh, we have seen here that um, a national center and a BCPC are um, very similar, except that the scope uh, might be different. Also, a BCPC, I would say, is usually focused on one kind of activity. So for example, agriculture or marine, even though then obviously there might be uh, various products uh, that are available. What also makes uh, those two similar is that national centers and BCPCs are the owners of the data and the creators of the metadata for this data. You will learn later about what uh, what metadata is. Now, uh, there's a third type of center, which maybe in the GPS world uh, didn't exist yet, the uh, DIS. So the closest to what uh, existed in the GPS world maybe uh, used to be an RTA. And um, indeed, uh, many of the RTHs um, have uh, become uh, disks, even though uh, not uh, all of them. What is it uh, a disk does? I have spoken of this catalog of information where we can find out what exists, which products, products exist. So those uh, disks, they hold uh, this WMO metadata catalog. And uh, they also cache the information that is circulated in the GPS for 24 hours, thus allowing you, well, if you have missed some bulletin, to recover these from the cache. The disks also act as a core communication hub for uh, the WMO uh, telecommunications infrastructure. Uh, the disks also play a core par, uh, core role in the uh, discovery access and retrieval, the DAR mechanism, WMO DAR. Uh, I will later dwell a little bit more on what that is. But it basically involves uh, finding and accessing information. Then, um, uh, the fourth part I spoke of in the beginning is the uh, data communication network. So um, this comprises the GPS but goes uh, beyond that. So also other types of communications are part of the WIS data communication network. So uh, we have here the GPS, as I said, uh, satellite communications, internet connections, and others. Now, um, there's the WIS core network, which is the network that connects all the disks. So, um, since all of these disks hold a metadata catalog and also 24 hours worth data um, of the GPS, they need uh, a network where this information can be synchronized. So uh, there's the notion of the WIS core network. And then uh, there is uh, the concept of AMDCN, area um, based network. So uh, AMDCN stands for uh, Area Meteorological Data Communication Network. Uh, An AMDCN is defined by, um, uh, or uh, the AMDCN of a disk comprises all those centers uh, that have um, uh, gotten into an association with uh, this disk. That is the definition as it stands in the regulatory material. So um, I in a way here, uh, you see how the, the new WIS structure on top maps on the old uh, GPS link um, concept. 
we know that um, the cloud one and two are now merged uh, using the RMDCN MPOS network. The, the RMDCN is the regional meteorological data communication network and that is operated by each MWS. Um, so it is, uh, in, in a sense, a European uh, network. However, it also um, doubles as the WISCOR network um, with some exceptions. So, uh, for example, here are our colleagues from Asia. They are connected to it, uh, the US, and um, almost all the BRICS. Uh, BRICS candidates uh, have, have a connection to it. In the WISC, uh, supports uh, the various WMO programs and activities. Here uh, I have just listed some. So there's the Global Observing System, the GDCFS, uh, and uh, many others uh, are use the WIS and the GCS to make information available about the services and products, as well as uh, to disseminate uh, this information or to retrieve information necessary to make these products. So um, rather vague till now um, is all this notion of centers and data communication networks. Um, how, how does this look like in practice? So please here uh, see this person with uh, his computer and he's looking for some data. Mm. So uh, for example, uh, this person is looking for some marine warnings in an area that is bounded by 40 to 10 west and 45 to 70 north. Just an example here for marine information. He's looking. And uh, where is he looking? He uses um, a, a search interface at a disk of his liking where he inputs his um, query, so the boundary box and some phrase may be telling that he's looking for a marine warning. Now, uh, what has happened earlier, you see here, is that um, down um, from this side, uh, an NC or DCPC that is the holder and owner of information has made available some information to the disk about uh, its services so in the form of metadata. This means that in the disk there is all the information available and it can now uh, give the search results back to um, this user. Now uh, this is essentially what you do when you Google for information also. You type in some query, you get a result. And previously, maybe Google has retrieved the information from somewhere. Now uh, comes a very crucial part here. To retrieve the information uh, that has been found, this user goes directly to this NCDCPC um, data holder. Uh, where uh, he can then retrieve the information. Now the key here is that there can be some security or authentication uh, or payment or some other policy. So um, in a way, this uh, makes sure that uh, the holder of the information and the data owner is in control of what happens to the data. Uh, but then how can the disk have known that this data existed? It is because the metadata has been published. So what is metadata? Um, here is some metadata. So 
if I now drink from this bottle, how can I know that there was not poison inside? Because here it says ma, so water. Um, I read on this piece of paper here that it is water and it was produced here in Qatar and maybe some other quality information, it has been purified. Uh, so, however, it had nothing to do with what was inside. So, um, this was metadata, information about what is inside. And uh, that is the same uh, in our metrological context. Metadata means some description about what the product is but not the product itself. So in a way, these are separate. We tell the GIST, we have available this and this and this, but uh, it is actually us who hold the data. Now, how does this square with the idea of the cache? Didn't we say earlier there's a 24 hours cache available of uh, information? This is only a subset. As you know, what circulates in the GPS is anyway information that is globally available to all members. So we can cache it. But then there are many other products um, that you might have and data that doesn't circulate in the GPS. So for this, people come um, to your place using the bar mechanism and you can then apply a policy of your liking. For example, this could be that uh, requests coming from the same country can access your information. People from outside, they maybe need to sign a form or make some payment or some other criteria. How is the width? Um, formally specified. The width uses the idea of uh, SOA, so a service-oriented architecture, which means um, interfaces are specified, um, but not uh, the technical um, instructions how to implement an interface. So everybody can use their own system, maybe somebody, a uh, Windows system, others, a uh, Unix system, different programming language, or even different databases. This is uh, not of importance. What is uh, important is the interface. And um, here, in the WIS technical specification, um, there are 15 of these interfaces in seven areas. Uh, that need to be implemented so that a center is compliant with the width. Uh, which are these interfaces? Um, they are concerned with, uh, for example, um, the uploading of metadata. You see here on the slide that uh, we talk of discovery metadata and then sometimes we talk about dissemination metadata. Uh, is that the same thing? No, it is not. Um, so uh, I would say the dissemination metadata you don't need to worry about. And when we talk usually about metadata, what we mean is the discovery metadata. So discovery metadata, what is that? That was the thing that enabled us to find the product in the disk and to know where to find it then. Uh, so um, area number one is concerned with the uploading of discovery metadata and, and the uh, DAR metadata catalog. Then the um, area number two is the uploading of data and products as well as the caching of this. Now um, here some of you might wonder um, what is this uploading? Is that not something we do already? For example here in Doha, I have learned you have a connection to Jeddah and you upload uh, information to them and it is then distributed. And then I say, welcome, congratulations, 
you have already implemented one interface. Um, because what the risk specifies is often things that people already do. So uh, worry not, often you will find that you already do many of the things that are asked. So the area number three is the uh, BAR mechanism that I've already explained. The uh, area number four is concerned with downloading of data and products. Here we have three subcategories via dedicated networks, via non-dedicated networks, and via other methods. So a dedicated network is um, code for the GPS, maybe leased line or a very stable connection. Then non-dedicated network is the internet. More and more people make use of the internet to disseminate information. I've seen uh, you have a nice web page and I can see the weather forecast there. So you use uh, non-dedicated networks also for the dissemination of data. And then uh, also other methods are available. Maybe um, you have some climate archives and they're only available on paper. So um, you make a copy for me and send it to me. So you have disseminated information via other methods. Um, now comes the sixth, uh, no, the fifth uh, area, which is uh, maintenance of dissemination metadata. Uh, you um, very probably have some message switching system for your national audience where you distribute some information to different customers, maybe other agencies or uh, to the ministry or to some other authorities. Thus, you have some information about who receives what. And uh, this is dissemination metadata. So um, maybe the chief of Bork uh, receives a warning and uh, the Ministry of Agriculture receives uh, agriculture forecasts that come from other countries. So um, that, that is dissemination metadata. Uh, then here, the second last one is maintenance of user identification and role information. Um, that is concerned with um, making sure only those authorized uh, have access to products. The, the last uh, and seventh area is uh, the monitoring and reporting of quality of service of the WISP system. What uh, now uh, is metadata? I have given you an example here already of the bottle. Um, so maybe that helps you as you go about uh, finding out more about metadata. But there's also other information available. Uh, first of all, the online guide uh, accessible at this URL. Uh, um, very comprehensive document about uh, uh, WIS metadata and the um, standard uh, behind uh, the WIS metadata, which is um, ultimately XML that you all might know, and more uh, specifically the ISO 19139 XML standard and the ISO 19135, uh, which are more or less the same. I have already mentioned that both the RA2 and also the CBS uh, have encouraged and are still encouraging members to review and update the startup metadata that has been generated. For this, later on, uh, the JMA colleagues will brief on the WIM service, the interim service for metadata um, that you can use to update uh, your uh, metadata or to provide additional ones in the absence of your principal disk uh, being ready. 
You're also encouraged to add metadata for high profile or priority products. So um, what could be that? Say um, you, the, the data that, the metadata that has already been generated as part of the startup metadata is what you circulate in the GTS. Now I think um, in the case of Qatar, uh, you have one station I have learned. So, um, however, you have many more products here that you distribute maybe uh, regionally or nationally. For these also metadata can be created so that people can find out about uh, their existence. So then me, for example, before coming to Qatar, I can go to a GIS and search what kind of products are available. I can find out, for example, maybe there's a nice uh, um, desert visiting product where it tells me when I can go and when there will be a desert a sandstorm. So that will help me with my planning of coming to Doha. Or um, maybe there's also other products. Um, but the point is, uh, uh, members are encouraged to create metadata for all their products and services. How can you do this um, without having to do too much manual work? Uh, uh, part of building a center for WIS, uh, both NC and BCBC, is just establishing a metadata management system. There's various ways how to do it. Some people uh, just manage the information in the GIS because the GIS provides a nice interface where I can input in some form the information and it will do the metadata for me. On the other hand, uh, a more um, uh, advanced center maybe, such as maybe a marine center, uh, will have its own catalog where uh, all the products that are available in it are automatically translated into metadata and then uploaded to the GIS. Don't worry about the XML. Um, it can be quite heavy when you first see such an XML document. Uh, the reason why WMO adopted this rather complex ISO uh, 19139 standard is that so that this information can also be understood by people outside the meteorological community. Or um, the WIS is also about strengthening the role of meteorology in the wider scientific community. So if others can understand what we have, automatically our importance goes up. And this is then something that can also be nationally used um, uh, in negotiations with uh, the ministry, for example. So by contributing to WIS, the role of meteorology in uh, general goes up. But um, worry not about the complex XML. Uh, the um, developers can deal with that and normal users will usually just have to maybe fill out a form or an Excel document um, which will then turn into uh, the XML. I dwelt already on the metadata, so think of it as a label or a library, library card that helps you to find the book. Uh, what is it we want? Uh, not rocket science, we want very concrete things such as ab abstract title, author, maybe some keywords, data format, identifier, coordinates, where does this product exist or what is it about? Uh, Time-related information, such as, for example, time series, then um, time information on the metadata, when was it last update, uh, updated, and finally, contact information. Who is responsible for the dissemination? Uh, who is responsible for the creation of the metadata? How can you get started? You can get started by looking at the metadata that has been created for you already. 
And for this, uh, you can use the Wind service, or in case you have a disk up uh, and running, uh, that is your primary disk, you can uh, also um, look at it there. Then, um, if you create some new metadata for a product, such as, for example, this desert sandstorm visiting product, uh, you can maybe retrieve a metadata record from a similar product of another GCPC and modify it. Um, or um, you are happy enough to now be in the metadata workshop where we will later also discuss uh, the ins and outs of the metadata in the technical segment. Here um, we talk about the area of which interfaces that are concerned with uploading. As I said already, um, this applies only if you want to upload data of products um, into the WIS. Uh, most of the time uh, you find out you already do this, then the GPS is the most common way. But um, also, um, for those centers not having a GPS connection or for those centers not using the GPS to disseminate some of the products they have, other means can be used, such as uh, internet, email, FTP, or others. Um, here, um, other uh, relevant networks are AFTN, uh, TCPs, uh, or other agreements between um, the, the sender and the disk to um, communicate the data. As you know, the GPS uh, specification is described in the manual on the GPS uh, for your information. Here, uh, the uh, other area uh, that I also introduced earlier already is uh, the downloading of data or products. Here we have two um, components. Uh, you, the first one is um, downloading of data and products uh, from the disk or from the WIS to uh, your center. This is also something your forecasters do on a, a daily basis already. It is, after all, uh, their daily work. So again, uh, here the WIS specifies something that is already the case. Now the second part. Um, sorry, I need to find my notes. That is um, the second part is uh, the making available of um, data to users. So um, those could be inside your organization, but um, those could also be outside. So for example, um, uh, university researchers or the general public. Um, so uh, they should also have inf uh, information and access uh, if they're authorized to information in the WIS as part of uh, uh, strengthening the role of methodology, um, as I said earlier. I will uh, not repeat what I said about dissemination metadata. Uh, I think I explained that earlier enough, uh, in enough detail. Uh, dissemination, uh, you, you already in your um, message switching system. You know that uh, the data that circulates in the GPS um, is uh, made available to all uh, other WMO members, but not necessarily to the general public. So um, 
part of user control at the uh, national center or the DCPC. Oops. Oh. Uh, is uh, making sure that only authorized users can have access to um, the data that comes from the GPS. Of course, this also includes um, your own authorization schemes where you might uh, or might not make available information only to a selected uh, group of users. Um, for example, a, a military context could be mentioned here. Uh, the Met Authority often shares information of a sensitive nature uh, with the military authorities, but of course not uh, with everybody. So um, you have most likely for this case already also an uh, authorization mechanism. Finally, the quality of service monitoring. Um, it is uh, concerned with uh, monitoring the health of the WIS system as a whole. Uh, already what is being done in this area, I mentioned earlier, is the special MCN monitoring and the WWW monitoring in general, but um, this is only a part of what will be the WIS monitoring. Uh, the WIS monitoring will be more comprehensive and as you have heard earlier from the CBS and RA2 association reports, uh, the um, respective bodies are tasked now to develop a plan and strategy to uh, implement uh, WISH monitoring. In other words, what should be monitored is not yet clear, but uh, it will go beyond what is currently done in the course of SMM and WWW uh, monitoring. What about um, data representation or standardization? There was a question on this earlier already. Uh, concerning WIS, I should say that any data can be transported in the WIS. Uh, you can see how this might work. You have some metadata record and it describes that here I have available a product of this type. Then people come to your um, national center or DCPC portal to retrieve the information and it can be anything. It can be an image or a, a buffer file or um, some sound recording or um, something else. So WIS is not concerned with, uh, the, um, with how uh, the data is represented. However, um, other WMO initiatives are, and here uh, comes of course the WIGOS or um, the uh, uh, GBCS codes that everybody is encouraged to use so that then um, it is easier for users to consume the data. It is clear that if everybody uses a different format, it is very difficult then for uh, the unintroduced to um, make sense of the data. So um, a variety of standards exist in the WMO community, buffer grip, track, CDCF, red CDF, XML, CML um, are just uh, some of them. How does the WIS metadata catalog work? Um, as you know already, there's the DAR metadata in the ISO 19139 and ISO 19115 uh, uh, standards. Um, this synchronize this metadata so that um, all of those global centers have the same information. Uh, however, uh, National Center or DCPC only has to arrange for its metadata to go to the uh, disk that it is attached to. The disk will then take care of disseminating globally this information. 
uh, you can already see um, that maybe some WMO publications will be affected by this. Currently, there's a volume C1 uh, that contains uh, the list of bulletins and products in the PPS. Uh, eventually, the um, uh, volume C1, C1 will be replaced by the metadata catalog. However, uh, it has been decided that until 2015, those two uh, concepts will exist in parallel, even though um, regionally arrangements can be made to automatically uh, synchronize these two publications to avoid uh, um, redundancy updates. Uh, what about volume A? Um, volume A uh, will continue um, as a separate publication um, as not all volume A information is in the GAR metadata. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, the volume A contains um, surface and uh, upper air stations, as you know, um, and not uh, it, it is probably not so wise to create one metadata record for each of these stations as uh, usually several stations are syndicated in one bulletin um, to create a higher level product. So thus uh, the level of information in the volume A is higher than is available in the metadata catalog. How can you implement Wix? Uh, the way forward is to use the service-oriented architecture and interoperability. So um, by implementing the technical in interfaces specified in the functional requirements, you will then automatically um, become part of the Wix and you can work with the other centers um, by way of magic or by way of uh, service-oriented architecture. One important step for this is to register uh, your national center or your DCPC. Um, I think in the case of national centers, uh, this has mostly been done uh, if you have uh, for some reason, maybe uh, grounds to believe that several national centers exist in your um, country. Uh, you could check if um, uh, they are all registered, but the uh, NMHS of each country has been uh, automatically registered as an entry. Yes, please. Good. Um, I have uh, only two hours to go. <laughs> um, yes. Um, uh, I, I do have some more slides, but uh, I have a good uh, break point in about three slides. So then we can have lunch. Uh, I was saying that uh, the registration of DCPCs is a different matter. But this is something you need to do uh, yourself if you have uh, any um, intention to uh, register a certain activity you do as a DCPC. I have earlier explained what kind of thing could be a DCPC. Uh, many things can be a DCPC. The important point is that there is a regional aspect to this. Um, if I may give one more example. Um, a tsunami warning system, for example, uh, has an inherent uh, regional uh, role, but is of course not limited to this. How can you register a DCPC or um, also um, uh, other types of centers if you wanted to? There is a process in WMO and uh, it starts with registering in the um, WIS centers online questionnaire available on the WMO website, the link of which is contained in this presentation so um, and can also be reached from the WIS web pages. 
Um, it also requires um, a written statement from the PR of uh, the country hosting this PCPC. Uh, where is the um, regulatory information about the WIS? Uh, the main uh, uh, manual here is the manual on WIS. Um, also, uh, the manual on the GPS is relevant here. So, um, how to comply the, with the relevant interfaces, how to designate uh, national centers or GCPCs, um, and uh, crucially, how to demonstrate your capability to function as such a center to uh, CBS and then later Congress and Executive Council. Um, the guide to WIS, which is um, a, a guide, WMO-wise, um, the um, level of publication and guide status it will contain uh, more information about metadata. Um, as I said earlier, the monitoring part is yet um, to be decided uh, what exactly should be monitored. You are fortunate enough to be here uh, with us this week and you will benefit from more presentations on the subject of um, regulatory material and how to designate and demonstrate your center's capabilities using the demonstration process. Um, here um, I come to the break point now. Uh, we can go uh, to lunch. Uh, as you go to lunch, maybe uh, some questions you might have. Or here um, I also have uh, some uh, ready answers. So um, the, the role of the GPS in WIS, uh, it is crucial to understand uh, what the WIS structure is and the role of the different centers. And uh, then uh, you can dwell on what is new in the WIS, mainly the idea of catalogs and metadata uh, and the DAR process to find new um, data or products. If you're still struggling, I mentioned the uh, Secretariat Jumpstart offer where um, WIS experts from uh, um, centers having implemented WIS or also from the Secretariat can uh, work with you on the ground to um, uh, make an implementation plan. Um, with this, uh, I would like to stop so that we can have lunch, but maybe um, uh, if there are some questions, we can deal with them now um, or, later. or later. Your stomach is aching. Yeah. <laughs> From the lunch. How long do we have for lunch? Uh, maybe one thirty is challenging. Quarter to two. Yes. Um, good. Then you can think uh, about questions over lunch. Thank you.